When I think about 1985, it was such a journey. I was looking for something and really didn't know that I was looking. And I had a very good friend and co-worker named Diane Wilson who came to me one day by the water fountain and said, how would you like to go to church? And I could tell how nervous she was when she asked me. And it shocked her when I was so quickly said yes because in my heart I knew there was something that I was missing. And I thought that maybe this was the answer. So Diane introduced me to Church of the Savior out in Wayne, Pennsylvania. And the pastor at that time was a man by the name of Bill Hogan, Dr. Bill Hogan. And this man opened the Word of God before me. I'd never heard anyone preach the way he preached before. It unfolded the book of Acts step by step. And I felt myself being swallowed up in the Word of God. And all the time I'm thinking, this is a new and exciting thing. I couldn't wait to go to church in the morning. And I would get there super early so I could sit in front just in case the microphone died, I could still read his lips. And it was an exciting moment for me. And what was really special about it was that I felt like I was being invited into a new lifestyle, but I didn't really know what it was. And then that spring, that same friend Diane comes to me and she hands me a ticket. And I say, what's this for? And she says, there's gonna be a retreat this spring, a singles retreat, and I'd like you to go. I slid the ticket back to her, I said, black people don't do retreats. Retreats are for crazy people. And she looked at me and she laughed. She says, well, for me, think about it. And that spoke to me about the closeness of friendship and the intimacy that you have with a friend, a good friend. I trusted her and believed that just like the invitation to come to Church of the Savior was one of sincerity, I believe that this invitation to go somewhere that was totally out of my cultural bounds, a retreat, a singles retreat, what was that all about, uh, was something that I needed to do. And the next thing you know, I find myself here, Harvey Cedars Bible Conference on Long Beach Island, New Jersey. And I remember driving here in my car and all the while thinking about what this experience was going to be. I never gave much thought to Jesus and the Bible, but a singles retreat and how far out of the box that was. And I already knew, based on Church of the Savior, that there wasn't going to be many black people here. And sure enough, while I was here, it was maybe a couple hundred of us here that weekend. It was just me. And uh, the weekend began, and it was a really interesting experience for me because something like I had never experienced before. They broke us into small groups. We were staying in a barracks, a dormitory type barracks, sleeping in bunk beds. And the guy sleeping over top of me, his name was Kendall. And I remember Saturday morning him coming down from the bunk and he stepped right on my head. And I said to myself, now this is interesting. And he laughed, he apologized. And we connected in that moment and been friends ever since. And while we were in our small groups, we were sharing about the Bible. And one of the things, this is funny, I, I, in searching for what do you take to a retreat? So I pulled out what I consider to be my best Bible. And what made it my best Bible was that it had a zipper because most Bibles didn't have zippers, so I thought it must be special, it has a zipper on it. So I carried this Bible and I go into this small group conference that we were having. And we were studying the Word and I just realized this was totally foreign to me. That the Word I was hearing was not what I knew. And I'm reading it, but it sounds like it's a strange language. And yet these guys around me were engaged in conversation. They were sharing a lifestyle that I knew nothing about. I couldn't get in it because I didn't know it, but I was marveling at, at this thing. And then later on in the day, we got went out and had some fun and then came back into our small sessions. And they began talking all the more and I realized these guys knew somebody. They knew someone that I didn't know. And his name was Jesus. I found this kind of strange because I had grown up in the church, had heard the Bible preached, been in Bible study, Sunday school, and all these things, but I still didn't know this man. And 
they had a relationship and that's what they were talking about and I realized Saturday afternoon, June 8, 1985, I did not have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And when I went to sleep that night, most of the guys went out and they did certain things. I went to my room and spent some time to myself and wondering about my life. If you remember, I talked about 1985, that beginning of that year, and when it was a time of emptiness for me. And I, I was wondering in my room that night, had I found the answer? The answer to that big question that was screaming out of my heart. Had I found the answer? And Sunday morning, about 5 a.m., it was dark outside. And most people know I'm an early riser and I'm out walking around. And I took a stride to the other side, the beach. And I found myself sitting on a bench watching the waves come in and go out. And I noticed that uh, there was an uh, ambiance there was different than I had ever experienced before. And so I decided to talk to this man, Jesus. And I said, you know what? I want to get to know you. I want to know who you are. And if you'll have me, I'll surrender myself completely into your hands. I don't know what that means. I'm a little scared of it. But I heard these other guys, these other men, and the relationship they have with you. And I want to know you like that. They trust you. They depend on you. It seemed like something that I really needed to complete me. And Jesus said, okay. As clear as I'm talking to you, I heard that. And I said, is that it? No more grandeur, no more, no, no thunder or lightning, no pillar fire, you know, uh, that's it? He said, yes, that's it. Okay. And I felt something in me that was kind of exciting. I felt like I was, the journey was going forward, but it was a journey into a new life and a new, a new beginning. And I turned in to walk away and it was like I had an epiphany. I said, something going on. I, I want to ask one more question. I turned around and I said, could you please put in me a burning desire for your word? A fire that wouldn't go out. I wanted to understand the word of God. I want to have a relationship with the word like I heard these other guys saying. I wanted to have that and so much more. And I asked him, could I, could I have that? And he said, okay, you got it. That's it. And that was it. And I walked away that day realizing that I had a personal encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. A life-changing meeting here at Harvey Cedars Bible Conference in New Jersey. And from that point on, my life has been changed. And I've been, I would say that was the beginning of my walk, my, my beginning of the 30 years of slave, which we're celebrating today. I believe God has brought us here to revisit that moment, not for my glory, but all for his glory. Because at that point, I was truly a slave for the